My name is Will Lehman, and I'm a second-tier worker at Mack Trucks in McCungy, Pennsylvania. I'm running for president of the UAW International. This campaign is about placing power where it belongs, with workers on the shop floor. I urge you to vote for me and talk to your coworkers about voting. By supporting my campaign, you are supporting the fight for rank and file power. Workers have until November 18th to return their ballots by mail, and the next two weeks are critical. We're fighting for the highest possible voter turnout under conditions in which the UAW is not even telling its members that there is an election. When I launched my campaign just over four months ago, I explained that its aim was to give voice to the interests of rank-and-file workers in opposition to the entire pro-corporate UAW apparatus. What do you think about the leadership being workers' power on the floor? That's the way it should be. I just feel like the leadership that we have right now has been bending over to the company and taking everything they can from us. You know, we lost like Cola, the two-tier system that they have now. We're doing the same work. Why aren't we making the same kind of pay? In order to fight for the things we need, we need to have rank and file communities everywhere. The workers are the ones, if we see that the bureaucracy is bending over, as you put it, yeah. the workers are the ones that need to stand up and fight, whether the bureaucracy backs or not. And My father started working at Ford in Cleveland, barely knew any English. Started January 28th, 1953. My parents had eight kids. My dad was, my mom was able to stay home, take care of the house, and raise the kids with my dad's income. Yeah. And you can't do that anymore, you know? Right. Because and, uh, they conceded that. Right. Right? And the only way we're going to get anything is if we fight for it. Right. They fought like hell back then. What I'm saying is, the workers need to take the power back. Right? I agree. With and that. it's not just going to be done through an election. I'm talking about building those committees on the floor to take it, you know? It's crappy the way they do the TPTs especially, but I don't care for losing out. We're losing out every, seem like every contract. One thing is clear, workers want to fight. We want to fight against grueling work schedules, against unsafe conditions, against decades of declining wages, against multi-tier contracts, against the horrific conditions of exploitation that tens of thousands of temporary workers confront. All workers in the UAW face soaring inflation, while we are stuck in multi-year contracts that mean we are making less in real terms every year. We face a looming recession as Wall Street seeks to provoke mass layoffs to make it easier for corporations to cut wages and make us pay for the bailout of the rich. Stellantis has eliminated the third shift at Warren Truck and is threatening to close or cut jobs at Belvedere and Trenton Engine while Ford is closing Romeo Engine Plant. Our biggest issue is our rolling over our TPTs and our, layoffs is and our layoffs. We come in and we do all this hard work and it's really not appreciated for real. Like, I make $20 an hour and I'm on my feet 10 hours a night. So, I'm, I'm definitely voting for Will. Put the rank and file back and uh, back up top. What do you think about this inflation at nine percent and being lush? Mm -hmm. It's terrible, dude. It's getting screwed every single day. Mm -hmm. Living broke. Uh, low, low paying job. I'm a team leader. I make a dollar more than anybody that tops that stopped out after a year and a half, and it's only sixteen eighty three an hour. And we confront corporations that don't care for our lives. As workers, we mourn the loss of Stephen Dierkis who died after falling into a molten iron crucible at the Caterpillar Foundry in Mapleton, Illinois on June 2nd. Travis Baker, an auto worker and father of four who died on August 18th after being injured at the Stellantis plant in Belvedere, Illinois. Catherine Pace, who died on March 27th, 2020 after contracting COVID-19 in the paint department at the Warren Truck Plant. Danny Walters, who died in June 2021 after suffering a seizure at work at a Dana Auto Parts plant in Dry Ridge, Kentucky. The UAW did not even bother to inform his wife, and there are countless others. The companies see these workers as less valuable than machines, who can be replaced with another worker as easily as replacing a part. Once upon a time, these jobs were coveted. I mean, they were. You had to wait in line for hours to hope for a chance to get in here. Now it's become a revolving door like everyone else because the incentives aren't there they once were.
Like, my grandfather retired from Ford in Ohio. My mother worked at Ford for 22 years. And what I'm seeing today is totally different from what I heard, you know, growing up as a child. Well, how long is your breaks? 13 minute breaks and a 20 minute lunch. Wow, Jesus. And then we work nine hours most days. And they give you a six minute break after the eighth hour, if you work the ninth. My whole goal is just to make sure I feed my family and that's pretty much it. I never had a time a time or a chance to actually really do anything, you know? What is it that is stopping us from fighting against these conditions? It is the UAW apparatus. The UAW is staffed by people whose collective salaries are $75 million a year. Over 450 international staff make over $100,000, including two of my opponents, UAW President Ray Curry and international rep Sean Fain. If there was one constant refrain I heard over and over again in this campaign, it is that the UAW is a business. By this workers mean that there is a massive parasitic apparatus sitting on top of us, dictating what we do in bed with management, bribed and bought off. However, how many years have you been here? Over 10 years. Okay, so what has the UAW International done for you in that amount of time? Nothing, just rob us. The UAW anymore is a racket, in my opinion. No more crooks. Get rid of all of the brothers in the Good Boy Country Club. Right. Nothing but crooks. And all of them need to be in federal prison. Who you gonna vote for? Well, only one. See, that's the problem. These UAW workers, they really paying the, man the management paying the UAW workers. I don't like that, bro. Y'all supposed to be fighting for us. Vote Will. Exactly. Vote Will Lemon. This is why my campaign has raised as a central demand the abolition of the UAW apparatus. During the debates and in the course of the campaign, the candidates of the apparatus, including Curry and Fain, have said that workers shouldn't vote for me because I don't have experience. It is true, I don't have the experience of a high-paid bureaucrat well-practiced in selling us out and ramming through contracts that we don't want. Ray Curry and Sean Fain do have experience. They have experience making six figures in our dues money while they sell us out. In the years of the worst corruption, when the UAW leaders were taking bribes and buying each other luxury gifts with our dues money, they were there. Their salaries kept increasing. They rose to the top of the trash heap. Ray Curry and the UAW opposed having direct elections in the first place. It makes me sick to my stomach to hear them claim their experience is a positive. What about the experiences of the rank and file who are watching this debate? While Curry makes $272,000 and Fain makes $156,000, there are auto workers who are homeless, who work two jobs because UAW wages are so low, who get hurt and sick and die at work because the UAW tells us the companies can do whatever they want. The companies are only able to do what they want because the bureaucracy allows it. But this campaign is not about me. It is about building a movement of the working class. Taking on the companies and the pro-company UAW apparatus requires organization. This is why I have called for the development of rank and file committees in every plant and workplace. Many workers have asked me what I mean by rank and file committees. The answer is simple. They are committees composed of and controlled by us, the workers, through which we can advance our own demands and overrule the decisions of management and the apparatus. Rank and file committees must have full control and oversight over all UAW assets, currently $1.08 billion. Along with national and local bargaining, only in this way can we fight for what we need, not for what the corporations say is acceptable. It is high time for a coordinated struggle of all workers in the UAW, in unity with every section of the working class, to fight for massive pay increases to make up for decades of concessions, the return of COLA to meet soaring inflation, the abolition of all tiers and the conversion of temps to full-time workers, the restoration of the eight-hour day and full pensions and health care for retirees and current workers. Two-tier wage system needs to, needs to go away. Health benefits, medical insurance needs to come down as far as premiums. Yeah, I would really love to see COLA come back. Cost of living, I mean, yeah, everyone thinks, yeah, you make good money because you work here, but with the price of everything, it, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I make a minimum wage now when you look at it. 
current workers have a particular responsibility to fight for the conditions of retirees. The companies and the UAW apparatus see retirees and their benefits as simply a drain on profits to be cast aside once they can no longer work. Workers know that those who came before us fought for everything we have today. To anyone, including the bureaucrats in Solidarity House, who claim that such demands are unaffordable, we answer by noting that the companies are pulling in billions of dollars in profits. The 10 major auto companies quadrupled their profits last year from $14 billion to more than $54 billion. The main issues for me is the equality of the air. It's not equal. 1% of the population is the rich. So best believe that that 1% is going to hold on to the riches by keeping you poor. The inflation is gas, food, clothes. Of course, people want more. Why do you think Will is a good can candidate for president? Well, first of all, he was talking about the 50% pay increases, and I feel like we way past due for a pay increase. It was the COLA and that 50% pay increase, and that's what I, that's what stood out to me. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the overtime. Right. Triple time. Yep. One of the most significant facts of the campaign is that not only are workers everywhere supporting it, but they are beginning to establish rank and file organizations to continue the fight after the election. Workers at the Chicago Assembly Plant have established a committee to fight for their demands, including safe working conditions. Workers at Mac Assembly outside of Detroit have also formed a committee. In the days and weeks ahead, these initiatives should be extended to every factory and workplace. It's supposed to be a worker's organization, not a bunch of bureaucrats telling us what we can and can't yeah, do. that's what it's became. Right. I mean, what we need to do, though, is start communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. You know? If they're not going to do it, we got to handle it ourselves. And that's sure. that's what I'm talking about with the rank and file oh. committees, like we were talking about. Oh, I agree. Like I said, our local theory is do not do this. Right. Yeah. Well, you guys, if you guys do agree with that, you know, you guys could be a basis for a rank and file committee. I would like to refer to three additional aspects of this campaign. First, we have stressed that the fight of workers in the UAW must be connected to a fight of every section of the working class. Educators, healthcare workers, Amazon workers, and transportation workers. Right now, rail workers are engaged in a fight against the rail companies, the White House, and their own unions who are attempting to ram through agreements that they have already repeatedly rejected. This is an experience we as workers in the UAW know well, but it is the experience of all sections of the working class. Second, we have fought to unite workers in the U.S. with workers in Mexico, Canada, and throughout the world. The UAW apparatus promotes the bankrupt perspective of nationalism, pitting workers in the U.S. against our class brothers and sisters in other countries. But when I talk to workers about the need for international unity to fight the race to the bottom, there is enormous support. I'm running on the basis of an international workers' movement. So basically what the UAW does now, they kind of isolate us, you know, in just America. And what I'm trying to do is have rank and file committees in other countries as well. Like, I don't know, were you here in 2019? Oh, yeah. You know how the Salau Mex uh, Mexico workers refused to work overtime uh, to, t to scab on you guys? Do you remember that? No, I don't. Well, I can actually send you some stuff about that. So you can see it. Basically, Mexican workers refuse to work overtime and take work away from American workers. You guys, you were out on strike. What I'm trying to do is organize that kind of thing. They did it. Organize in what way? In both ways. So when the company tries to shift work out, it's blocked. And when they try to shift work in, it's blocked. And by that way, we raise both of our pay up. Right now, they're all worried about Canada taking right. work from us. Right. Too. And we need to have bonds with the workers in Canada. You know, rank and file committees there, too. Well, what I'm trying to advance, too, is an international fight. So like Volvo, for example, is a multinational corporation. And they can rea rea the reality of the situation is they can shift labor wherever they want if we don't if we aren't united internationally correct so what do you think about the idea of being united like every volvo plant workers you know being united so that way we can you know call them up and say hey they're trying to shift labor block it 
and then we do the same for them. Yeah. And that way, these companies can't control us like this. Correct. I, I agree with that 100%. All right. So, thanks. You can let them know right there. We need to all band together to lock things up. Will is saying we need to unite across borders. Correct. Yeah. What do you we think need, of that? I think it'd be great. We need to even up like that. I mean, we need that. I mean, we all need to stick together, whether we're in Mexico or Japan or wherever we're at. If we're all going to be auto workers, we all need to be the same. We all need to stick together. Mi nombre es Javier Martínez Mosqueda. Laboré por 24 años en GM Silao, en el área de proceso final. Y por el hecho de buscar un cambio sindical y mejoras laborales, Fui objeto de un fuerte acoso laboral y despedido injustamente en septiembre de 2019. Cuando apoyábamos la huelga de GM en Estados Unidos, se logró sacar, sacar al sindicato charro de la CTM, pero Cintia, el nuevo sindicato que representa actualmente a GM Silao, quien fue apoyado por el gobierno de, y sindicatos de Estados Unidos, no ha dado resultados. Sigue la falta de apoyo a los trabajadores, condiciones inseguras, jornadas agotadoras y muy bajos salarios. Compañeros trabajadores de GEMES y LAO, deben de formar sus propias organizaciones fuera del control de la empresa y del sindicato de Cintia. Formen alianza con los trabajadores de Estados Unidos y coordinen una lucha unida. Por eso, Apoyo la campaña de los tra del trabajador Wilderman para presidente de la UAW en Estados Unidos, ya que está llamando a los trabajadores a luchar unidos internacionalmente. Ánimo, si sí se puede. Hi, my name's Joe. I'm voting for Will Lehman for UAW president uh, because I'm uh, supporting the working class throughout the world. And uh, hopefully uh, we can all get together and make this happen. We all recognize that no matter what country we live in or what language we speak, we all have the same interests. We all confront the same companies. We all are fighting for the same ends, a secure life for ourselves and our families. This is why my campaign has supported the International Workers Alliance of Rank and File Committees as the organizational center for a movement of workers throughout the world. Third, I have made no secret of the fact that I am a socialist. I'm a socialist, mm -hmm. all right? and I want our labor, I want everything we do to be controlled by us. Right. We're the workers, we generate the wealth, that should be up to us to decide how we distribute Facts. that wealth. Facts. I have spoken to many workers who don't know what socialism is, but when I explain what it means, that society should be run in the interests of the workers, not in the interests of the rich, that production should be controlled democratically and based on social need, not private profit, I have found that workers agree. It is not socialism that they opposed, but what they were told socialism is. We're the ones in here making them the money. We ought to be able to have a say-so instead of the higher-ups having to say so. And why are you voting for Will Lehman for well, UAW president? I think he's the man that's going to lead us and get the power back on the floor. We're just tired of people of the union now catering to Dana. We want someone to fight for us, not them. I'm voting for Will Lehman. I want to bring the power and decision-making of the UAW and place it in the hands of the members on the floor. Well, he's honest, and he's and he's saying what everybody else is thinking. Yes, he is. And that's important. Because I like the truth. I like truth to just stand in front of injustice, to stand in front of everything. Because we felt we've fallen, and we got to get up. Over the years, we've lost more and more, and it's time that somebody stands up to them. We need someone to step up in the union to give us a chance to have equal rights. Right behind you, Will. For president, I voted for Will Lehman, because we need change. I'm about for Will. It's time for change. I think Will's going to do a great job as our president, and uh, we need somebody who's going to go and fight for us. Because he stands for what the UAW used to stand for, which is break and file, not the corporations. Why did you vote for Will Lehman? Um, because he's a socialist. He's for the workers. Whatever happens in the vote, 
This campaign has been a huge advance for rank and file workers in organizing ourselves into a fighting force. This must be expanded and developed in the weeks and months ahead. We have many battles before us and we must prepare. One thing I have heard from many workers is the statement that they want to fight, but they feel like they are the only one. Well, this campaign has shown the opposite. It turns out that everyone wants to fight. We just need to stand up and organize ourselves on every floor. The time is now, and it is we who must do it. No one will do it for us. Thank you.